What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Mental Corner Podcast, the show where I bring on guests from all different backgrounds to talk all the things mental health. Yes, we have changed our name to the Mental Corner Podcast from the H panel. I want to thank everyone who reached out and gave their opinion. I think it was pretty unanimous that uh, the change had to happen. It just makes a lot more sense. So if this is your first time listening, first of all, welcome. Second of all, any other episode that you've heard prior to this one will say welcome to the H panel. A little confusing, but I'm sure you'll get over it. Secondly, I wanted to say happy Mother's Day to all the lovely mothers, mothers-in-law, single fathers, parents of pets, older siblings, whatever you are. I hope you all have an amazing day because you deserve it. So for this episode of the show, I am joined by my friend Forel. Forel has actually been on the show before. We used his real name, Jordy Burrell, the last time, but since that episode was aired, you know, he's, he's kind of gained a huge following on TikTok as the Toronto man. Um, so aside from TikTok, you know, he does, he's a music producer, he's an actor, he's a jack of all trades really. And he's actually the mastermind behind the theme song that this podcast has. So as you can imagine, it's always fun to have my friend on. Thank you Pharrell for coming on and having this discussion with me. Now, before we get into it today, guys, you know, the drill, if you are listening, please like comment, share, subscribe, give five stars. If you're on that podcast platform, share with someone who might want to hear this episode. It's a really great one, and I can't wait for you to listen. I'll talk to you all very soon. Have a great Mother's Day. Peace. I'm Harry Potvin, and this is The H Panel. All right, we are live. Jordy, welcome back to the show, man. Happy to be here, man. Thank you for having me. So the last time we talked, I mean, other than before I pressed record here, last time we talked, 4L didn't really, wasn't really a thing on TikTok. Talk to no, me about that, man. Not. Talk to me about that. What's uh, that like? Oh, well, it's the weirdest thing I've ever done. So let's, let's start with that. Um, I tell all my friends, it's the weirdest thing that somehow I became good at. Um, it's something I don't understand. I wake up, I film the dumbest thing that I have in my mind every day, um, and I post it, and I hope the world reacts in a good way. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But um, essentially what happened was before I locked down, I think I was spoke, spoke on this last time I was on here, but I used to be a theater actor. So right before I locked down, started, I was really looking into getting back into the theater world, uh, exploring that once again, but obviously we can't sit inside, that's not a thing you know, which is awesome. Yeah. We'll get there. Um, so I was like, music was cool, music was fun, but I don't know if you're a fan of him or you listen to him, Gary V. Um, he had this post one day where he's like, you're trying to do something for yourself, you need to be TikToking three to four times a day, and I was like, what's this TikTok thing about? So, I um, was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. And um, it was just posting random videos here and there, little skits that I thought were funny. And then um, things kind of started clicking in my head and I started to figure things out. And I came up with this Toronto Man persona, which is not true at all, as you listen to me talk now. Um, and one thing turned to another, and here I am, being a Toronto Man every day of my life, which is weird. But it worked. So, so that's kind of what my life is like now. Man, it's been so sick to see because I remember when, like, when we when we last talked on my show, Toronto Man was not a thing. Like, we, I I remember we post I posted this episode, uh, June twentieth or something last summer, and Toronto Man started in like September, and I remember yeah. when you got your first ten k followers, and we were like, "Yo, that's fucking that's insane! What the hell?" And now you're at like what thirty yeah. three? Yeah, thirty three now. Crazy, crazy. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. Like that's the thing. Like, it wasn't a thing until it became a thing. Like entirely. You know what I mean? Like even on TikTok, like I never planned for it to be my shtick. But I was posting, 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 and it got like six hundred views, seven hundred views, a thousand views here and there. And then I posted this Toronto man. It was it wasn't even necessarily a skit. It was like you know, like how those the people that just do like those transition videos where it's like. They're wearing one outfit, and then they jump, and they're wearing another outfit. Mm -hmm. So I came home from work one day, and I was wearing this Super Mario t-shirt. And there was this um, transition going on where it was like, 
start your everyday life and transition into a Toronto man. I was like, okay, I can do that. So I was wearing a Super Mario shirt, and I was like, okay. So I captioned it. I was like, uh, when you finish your shift at EB Games at 8 and need to serve the streets at 10. And um, I just jumped and came out in full Toronto man gear. And then, like, within a couple minutes, it hit, like, uh, 8K. And I was like, huh, this is <laughs> this is weird, you know? And yeah. I, I'm very much one of those people that, like, when things happen, I want to know why they happen. Like, I don't, I, I'll never, very rarely will I tell myself, like, oh, that was just luck, you know? Like, I'm very much a, oh, the ghost in my room turning off my, ring, like, whatever, we're fine. Well, we'll, we'll figure that out in a moment. Um, I'm very much a person that, like, at some point, I'm like, okay, I need to figure out why that happened. So I was, like, posting other stuff for a bit, and then I was like, Let's see what, let me, let me test the water. Let me post another Toronto Man video and see how it does. And it blew up again. So one thing turned to another and here I am. I just figured out what worked and kind of ran with it. So that's, that's, that's kind of how Toronto Man came to be after not being at all. (laughs) (laughs) Man, that's so sick. Like TikTok's weird, man. Like you'll post a video and then like you said, a couple minutes later, it's like 8,000 people have seen it. You're like, how have 8,000 people seen it already it's like it's right? it, it's hard to fathom that big of a number that's a that lot quickly, of people quickly that is a lot of people like that is uh after like even now like i think i have a lot of issues like we'll talk about the effects of mental illness uh with social media in a bit but i think even now when i look at my numbers at like thirty two thousand, i often forget just how many people that is it's a no. lot of people, dude. That is a lot of people. You're filling a small stadium with that, you know? Dude. So, like, and I see these people with, like, a million, and, like, two million. I'm like, oh, wish it was that. But it's like, dude, 33,000? Yeah, I've been to town smaller than that. So. <laughs> dude, my town's <laughs> way smaller than that. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. So it's like, you gotta, you gotta just enjoy it, man. Like, you if you went from having nobody knowing who you are to 32,000 people caring that like you're posting every day, right? So it, it's it's very cool. And it's humbling. And it's, I, I hate to feel to say this, but I feel like just because I put a lot of work into acting that it's a long time coming. So I'm, I'm very, very grateful and excited to be in this position. But honestly, this has all happened in a year. So where will I be in two years? You know what I mean? Like, and that's, mm-hmm. that's kind of where my mind is now. It's like, this isn't, anywhere near done yet so no no man and i'm i fuck with that mentality because you're you're humble about it and you're thankful for it a lot of people aren't and i think a lot of people have trouble with that like i i i'm saying this as a guy who has trouble with it like when we're talking about numbers and putting it into perspective we're going to talk about social media obviously but it's so hard not to compare yourself to similar people and i was the same way i was the same way like with the podcast, yes, but with Instagram, especially like when I hit a thousand followers, I was kind of excited, but I was also like, uh, I'm nowhere near where uh, these other people are. And then it, it took a dude calling me a guy from my past. Like he, he just hit me up and was like, that's really sick, man. Like a thousand people want to fuck with you and watch your posts and do shit. And I was like, yeah, but it's not really what other people have. Like it's, it's kind of small compared to what other people have. And he was like, if you really like visualize a room with a thousand people in it and they all care about what you have to say, like it's like 33,000 people care about what you're saying. (laughs) Yep. Yeah. (laughs) What the hell? (laughs) Why? (laughs) (laughs) Dude, I ask myself that all the time. When I, when I saw the rankings for my podcast, the first reaction I had was why? (laughs) Like, yeah, you're yeah. in the top 10% in the world for podcasts. I'm like, why? <laughs> no, Dude, that, stop. Like, why? I like, I literally, like, obviously, we were talking about this before we came on air, but like, good for you, man. Like, I literally, like, I say this to everyone, even when I was on Medica's podcast, shout out her. She's a fucking cutest little, I think she, I picture her like a chipmunk. Yeah. And I, I yep. love her. Um, But even when I was on there with her, I was like, I don't think anyone in this world deserves this more than you just because of the base that you started from. That you are just a dude that went through some stuff 
and you want to be an outlet for the people that have gone through the same thing. And that's what I live for. It's like, you need to be the help that you needed in your life at a point, Mm -hmm. you know? And you did that, and the world has literally said, boom, you know? You put your energy into the world, and the world returned its energy. I'm a big believer in that. So congrats again. Man, thank you. Yeah, no, I um, I got chills from that shit. Uh, yeah. I um, <laughs> this this girl I talked to, and actually, her her video comes out tomorrow. I don't know when this comes out, but her video comes oh, out tomorrow. Really awesome. And we um, she gave me a free like hypnotherapy session. Yep. And in the session, she was like talking about my inner child or whatever, and she had me mm-hmm. go back to when I was a kid because I got bullied pretty hard a lot. And she basically, without, like, unprompted, she was like, oh, so young Harry was just looking for a big brother. I was like, fuck. I was like, that hit me hard because that's not something I thought about ever. But I am the big brother. And so Mm -hmm. I've never had that. Mm -hmm. So when she said that, I was like, oh, fuck. And that's basically what I'm just working towards. I'm just working to be the big brother that I was looking for. Yes, sir. And, like, a big thing in life I've, I've come to is, like, knowing your role in other people's lives and kind of accepting it you know what i mean like mm-hmm. i'm sure there's days you wake up when you're like you're in your bag and you're like i don't want to help a single person you know and you need those days we all need those days where we can just take to ourselves and, and do that that horrible thinking that we never want to do you know like that mm-hmm. that, that crucial self-thinking and rip yourself apart and rebuild yourself but at the end of the day you know who you are, right? And my dad and I had this conversation before. He was like, people are going to come to you with issues. And it's up to you to decide whether or not you're going to help them or not. But at the end of the day, you also need to know that they're coming to you for a reason. Mm-hmm. They could go to anyone else. Yep. But for some reason, they're coming to you. Take that as a compliment. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You are a definition of a people person at that point. You know what I mean? Yep. Because there's how many other people in the world and they want to come to you and you can tell them no. You can tell them no. But at the end of the day, if if you are that big brother, then accepting that role will will take you along. Man, that yeah, that's a great way to put it. It's the world population, that's a number I'll never get. Nope. I'll never understand it. Eight billion people. Wow. It's it's hard. How do you how do you it, it's hard not to feel small, you know? insignificant almost yeah especially as a creator because you're like there are so many people that are probably similar Mm -hmm. actually not probably there are a lot of people that are similar so another like you sent me like a list of things you wanted to talk about in this episode and i know one of them actually has to do with content creation so it's a good little transition um how do you stay productive during covid it's kind of hard um Nearly impossible, I'd even say. Yep. Um, it's it's very difficult in how uh, I have an issue, and I've, I've honestly been needing to go and talk to like a therapist or a doctor. I, I could have the busiest day ever, and my at the end of the day, my brain will still be saying, "Well, what more could you do? Like, is it really time to go to bed? Like, what, what, what? Like." It's oh, it's four in the morning. Like you can make you can make six TikToks, so you don't have to film again for the rest of the week. Like, what are you doing? Why are we sleeping? And um, that's kind of how my brain is, twenty four seven. Um, so when I was like when I was sitting in in COVID and I was I was sitting in lockdown, and I was making beats. Beats. The hard thing about beats is you could spend two hours making a beat. And it sounds like the exact same beat you made yesterday. Yep. And you don't realize until you're done. So I was getting very frustrated with that. Like all my stuff was sounding the same. The reason was I have no exterior motivation. I haven't seen people. You know, like I haven't had a conversation with anyone. I haven't I haven't haven't done anything like that. So I started thinking to myself, like, what can I what can I do? And TikToks the way I TikTok is I take everyday life that I live and I I blow it out of proportion. So a lot of the things I post about are just day-to-day things that I've, I've gone through or I've experienced and that I've just put a little spin on to make it funny. And that's, it's easy for me to 
find motivation because it's just the life I live. And then just putting a little twist on it. And then every day you're going to live a brand new experience, realistically. Like, I'd hope so. So if, if, if I can take one experience I go through every day and put a twist on it, then I have at least one video to post every day. Um, mind you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest with you. Some days I'll film four videos, and some days I'll take a week off posting. You know what I mean? And that's because you can't force your brain to do something it doesn't want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't mean that in a way of like, like you can, like you can sit down, and, you can sit down and podcast on a day where you don't want to podcast. But is it going to be as good as a day where you do want to podcast? Absolutely not. And are you going to be satisfied with the work? Probably not, because you went into it with the mindset of I had to do this this day. Now I have to drop it because I had to film it, or else I was just wasting time. You know what I mean? Yep, I've had that. I've had episodes like that. I I haven't released them, but. You can just tell in the video. I'm like, yeah, okay, like, well, just not in it. No, no, it, was, it wasn't me that day, and I, I forced myself to do it. And like, I have videos like that too, where when I post them, I know in my head, I'm like, this is gonna get no love because I didn't love it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I didn't, I didn't feel it. And that's what content creation is. Content creation should be a direct translation of you to a, to a camera, to a screen. And on days where I'm not feeling it and I'm posting just to post, like, those are the days where I don't even check the numbers. Which are the good days, too. Like, you don't want to be checking your numbers every day. But, like, when you post something and you're, like, in your head, you're like, man, why did I post that? There's nothing satisfying about that. And no matter how the TikTok algorithm works with how I need to be posting every day, blah, 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 this and that, I would rather not post one day than post something that's going to, like, make me more mad that I post it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, that just sends you spiraling. Right. Because then right. you start to be like, oh, why did I do that? Right. And then, then you're going to start comparing even your good videos to those ones. You're going to be like, yep. well, was I really into this? Like, the, you could have your, your video that's going to do the best out of any video that you've ever posted in your life. And you're just not going to be into it, you know? Mm-hmm. And you're just going to be like, no, nah, I didn't post it. Because yesterday I posted some whack shit. So I'm not like, you know, it's like, it's, it's very... Content creating is a lot harder than people think because you need to get to a point with yourself where you tell yourself, whatever, I'm going to post it. Or, But you also need to know that sometimes it's whatever I'm not going to post. You know what I mean? Like, and it's, yeah. it's a very, very thin line between the two. And I think I don't think people really give content creators credit. I'm not saying that for me, but like in your situation, like for TikTok, I, I was talking to my friend Felipe and he has a decent following on uh, yeah. TikTok. I, I for, he's like 50 K I think, but I was asking him because I was kind of, yeah, I was trying to like expand like my area just to like use it for like ad- advertising purposes or whatever. And he was like, yeah, uh, oh, I usually sure. post like three times a day. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like when you see someone famous or <laughs> When you see someone big on TikTok or you see someone big on Instagram or anything like that, you just assume they had it easy. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, unless you paid a lot of stupid money for it, you had to work to get those numbers. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And like, like I, like that's that's what I'm like. That's what I try to tell people is that like, like they're called we call them unicorns, but there's unicorns and everything, and those are the Mm -hmm. people that generally blew up off of one post. Those people are one in 10 million. Those people don't exist for the most part. You know what I mean? And especially from TikTok, the the hard thing for me is a lot of people want to go viral on TikTok. A lot of people don't want to, a lot of people don't want to build a brand for themselves on TikTok. A lot of people want to go viral on TikTok. So they'll post whatever and it'll get a million views, you know, rather than someone that wants to stay true to their own content. And that's something that I'm, I've, kind of I've struggled with, I'll fully even admit that like I see people that'll post something and they'll go up a hundred thousand followers in a bit. And I'm like, what? You yeah. know, like how did you do that? And then I look at how they did it and I'm like, wow, that's it's that easy. But then it's like, but that's not me. Mm-hmm. That's I'm not here. I always say to people, I would rather have thirty two thousand fan people people following me that generally want to know like how my day has been what like what's going on in my life rather than a million people that are just here to like 
how it quick left. You know? Yep. yep. Yeah, I know exactly That's what you're saying. Re- relationship building. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and I've seen it. I've seen it all through YouTube. People are like, hey, I've I've gained a thousand subscribers in a week. And I'm like, how the fuck do you do that? And they post a stupid video that they don't even enjoy or isn't even true to themselves. It just mm-hmm. got hits because it's like clickbait. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't, mm-hmm. I would rather not do that ever. Ever. So how is that satisfying? It's not. And my mom, my, my mom, she was trying to help me one time because my YouTube has been lacking, man. Ever since this show took off, I was like, eh, I like, there's, I, I just want to focus more on this. So my YouTube's kind of quiet, but my mom was like, you need to put more clickbait. Cause that's what gets views. And I was like, I, I see where you're coming from. And I appreciate you trying to help. I don't want that. Like I, nope. I, if you're coming to my channel for clickbait, you're coming for the wrong reason. Right. Right. And I, I love that you have that mindset because you are true to your content. You know, mm-hmm. you don't want to be like, I have the deepest mental health talk with someone ever. And they explain how they die. Question mark, question mark. It's like, what? I've seen that. I'm yeah. like, really? What? Are, like, come on. Mm. <laughs> this is a real topic. Yeah. Like how, are struggling. How, how am I going to connect with that as a viewer? I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not here for a while. Fact. You know, no, it, I want well, to exactly, see, yeah, exactly. I want to see someone that puts the work in. Yeah, mm-hmm. I want to see someone who sits down and has a a, a wholesome conversation. I want to know exactly. Clickbait makes you want their stuff, right? When you read, clickbait is the I should watch this because I wonder what happens. I want to know exactly what happens when I click the punch or whatever video, because I don't want to be just clickbait. Never, clickbait is never as good as the title. No, no, never, never, dude. I fall down that trap every, no joke, every single day because I go mm-hmm. through a U- YouTube wormhole every time I eat breakfast mm-hmm. and there's like NBA uh, clips, not from NBA themselves, but like from other accounts where they're like Zion posterized whoever with craziest dunk of the year and it's a layup. And I'm like, that's not even a dunk. Yep. And yep. I fell for it. Yeah. And I watched it. Here we go. And now I feel worse. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, like clickbait's the worst. Thing, like, don't I don't know why people set themselves up to disappoint people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, pe- people take take some joy in that. Yeah, they're like, ha ha ha! You watched my video. <laughs> you fall into my master plan. Like you're a weirdo, man. You are a weirdo. Well, like half. I'm not even gonna say half. Like ninety percent of the people who click that clickbait stuff, they're not gonna stick around. No, they fast forward. Yeah, so you're just looking at like instant gratification, which is like, you know, the the main theme of our generation. Yep. You want that yeah. instant. You want those likes. You want those views. You want those listens. It's it's like a drug. It is a drug. Man, it fully is man. And like, I've come to I, bro, like, There's like, I, I don't think it's true, but there's like a, a, a like a like a a kind of unwritten rule slash myth slash conspiracy about the TikTok algorithm that if you don't check your videos within the first three hours of them being posted, they do better because TikTok wants to feed you more notifications so you spend more time looking at your, you know what I mean? Like, mm. if your phone's if your phone's blowing up with all these notifications, you're like, oh, how many views am I at? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, there's like a a myth. I don't know if it's true. I've seen videos just like blow up in front of my eyes. But people like the world knows that people want this gratification, and that's sad, man. Because you see so many people lose track of themselves because they want to, like you know, they want to do well for themselves. And like you're gonna do well. Like just stop lying to yourself. You know, mm-hmm. you have to think at the end of your video. What do people think of you? You know what I mean? Yeah. What? When I when I'm done watching your video, do I know who you are? When I watch your podcast, I know who you are. If I didn't know who you were, I'd watch your podcast and be like, oh, I know this guy. You know what I mean? When I watch mm-hmm. something clickbait, I'm like, okay, so this guy's just like a carbon copy of everybody else that wants to create success. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yep. And that's it's sad. It's sad. It's like you care about this more than you care about knowing yourself or expressing who you are as a human being. Because that's that's what I'm here for. And especially during the like during the lockdown, people want genuine people 
to watch, to listen to, to talk to, whatever. Because we're deprived of human interaction. So, like, to me, when I see people, like, putting on, like, the celebrity status, I'm like, how, bro? You're locked down just like I am. You're stuck in your house. You are not this person that you're putting on for the camera. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. show that. Because that's what people need to see. People, I've always said, too, like, uh, this, is, again, this is kind of branching ahead, but essentially I have a clothing line dropping, hopefully October. Um, and we're, I'm selling it under the brand Fortress. And what Fortress is, the concept of Fortress, obviously 4L is, is the spinoff. But a Fortress, is, I call my Twitch, li- my Twitch live streams and my TikTok live streams the Fortress streams. And that's because I want my TikTok and my Twitch place to be as a, a place where when you've gone through the battles of everyday life, just going outside, living in your life, and being whoever you are, I want you to come to the Fortress, feel safe, and rest your head. You know what I mean? This mm-hmm. is where all the fake shit goes out the window. Because I'm a human and you're a human. I won't, I'm, I, sure, I have fun making those Toronto Man TikToks, but no, I'm not going to say I lie to you 400 times when you're in my Twitch stream. Because it's not me. Yep. It's not me. You know what I mean? Like, yep. that's, I want a place where I feel safe, therefore you feel safe. Come in with your problems. You have a tough day, tell me about them. I'm like, sure, man, let's talk it out. You know what I mean? You're having relationship problems. I might tell you something harsh, but it's probably what you need to hear. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't like the the creating of a character that social media has, has made. Mm-hmm. Man, this guy's got a clothing line starting. Uh, I might have to check that out. Yeah, it's gonna it's it's crazy. I'm so I'm not to we'll, we'll get out of this group ball for a bit, but um yeah, so the plan is um we're gonna run it under Fortress and every clothing drop we're gonna do, I'm gonna be paying different artists to do the designs for and I'm gonna give them freedom of like creating a character. So I'm gonna be because we're gonna go under Fortress and then I have my little zombie logo, so that's gonna be on our first uh like crew neck drop. And then I have another artist that's doing um like a design of myself and Chop. The Chop's gonna be like a three headed Cerberus. Mm. And um I'm just gonna put the like on the front of the, the hoodies, I just wanna put like my definition of fortress with like a different character on the back of the hoodie every time. You know, just some some cool stuff. And I want it to be like skatewear slash like streetwear slash I don't know. We'll see what happens. But yeah, it's it's definitely in my in my 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 realm of moves in the next year. That's dope, man. That's sick. That's that's something. You know, you just try to keep yourself busy and it's so hard because like it happens really fast that people ask me for a clothing line before I was ready to drop or anything. So it's like, okay, now I gotta pick up my pick up my feet here because people want want me on their t shirts, which is weird. It's gonna be weird seeing my face on other people's clothes. That's yeah, <laughs> I know what you mean. I, not very, not similar, but kind of like when I see my face on people's Instagram pages, and you get that when you're on people's stories and stuff, your TikToks. Oh, it's like, oh, so what is that? Why am I on your profile? Yeah. And isn't it weirder when they didn't they don't tag you, so you're just going through the stories? Yeah, you're yeah, like, you're just casually like you're casually like, oh, you reposted me. Yeah. Yeah, huh. yeah, seriously. Seriously, like, what? What are you talking Why? Why did you do that? <laughs> you know, like, so that's us being the humble minds. Like, why, why did you repost it? That's weird. You're weird. I was like, oh, yeah, because I have seen my thousand people. It actually makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. It's yeah. it's strange. That's, that's um, good, though. We're doing the right thing. Exactly. Yeah. And we're doing it right. Like, we, we, we mentioned this off camera, but like, when you start from a I, uh, did we mention this already? Like when you start from a place um, that isn't that instant gratification, you start from like, hey, I want to work really hard at this one thing yeah. and I'm just going to keep posting until I get it right. When you get the numbers or you get the placement or you get the recognition, dude, it feels way better than just an instant like dosage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we did mention that, yeah, because yeah, that's like, that's what I'm saying. Like, like, and the, like what you're saying too is like, Think about your first ever podcast. Would you ever want to even watch it right now? I can't. Me neither. My first TikTok, like, don't even show me that. I'll throw on my camera. I'll, I'll throw on my <laughs> That's disgusting. That's not yeah. me. That was way, that was not me. But it's that progression. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, I thought this was cool. 
now I'd rather die than post that because my content's around this much better. And that's, that's, that's coming from a spot where I was a kid, I'm just going to get my toes in to now being a point where you're going off the diving board. You know what I mean? Like, we have gone and we're getting this recognition. So now we expect more of ourselves. And that's, that's awesome. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah, man. It's cool it's to so see sick. other people are with it. Yeah, for real. Um, so the other, the other topic you wanted to get into was, uh, the social media impact on mental health. And you're probably more well-versed in this than you were last time we talked. So in terms of you personally, how have you seen it affect your mental health, either positively or negatively? Um, so yeah, I like, yeah, I think it's good that we start with positively. Um, it's good to feel in Instagram, TikTok, social media, whatever it is. It's nice to get recognition mm-hmm. when it's deserved. Um, I know I came from a spot where I was like, I don't know, you probably relate to this in a sense, but it's like, I'd rather die than not be doing what I'm doing, you know? Yep. So when I have had that mindset where it's like, okay, like, I just can't give this up, it's keeping me together, you know what I mean? Um, to now going to a place where it's like, I'm doing this and I I'm still have that mindset but I know I'm doing a good job because people keep tuning in. People like it's, that is has been like a like okay, like a breath of fresh air. You're doing something good, and it's working. That's probably the only positive side I'd have to say about social media. Um, what I'm gonna start with, um, and it affects this doesn't even affect me anymore. But it's sad that it doesn't even affect me because it shows you how much I've just been desensitized. Is that people are ruthless behind the keyboard. Oh my god, dude. And ruthless. I don't want to... I'm not trying to be the mantra guy here, but it's like... I know for a fact you wouldn't say it's like this. No. I know no. for a fact. I am a, a behemoth of a human being. You would not <laughs> say that to me if you saw me face-to-face. But you're going to be this guy that just has a black like profile picture of nothing on it with user 918000. You didn't even create a name for yourself. You're just on here to spew mm. hatred. How? Dude, when, uh, oh, I forget which one of your TikToks it was, but that guy, that random guy who was like saying that your TikToks suck or something, he was just like, this is how you should oh. do them. I was like, why? There was a great analogy that I heard where it was like, you would never go into someone's house and just shit on the floor. No. Like, why are you doing that on social media? That's essentially what they're doing. I've had that in my comments. People are just like, hey, fuck you. I'm like, you would never come to my house and tell me that, ever. No. And the the analogy I use is like, because I remember that. I remember that vividly when it was like, someone was like, hey, you make some really good content, but your sounds that you use are always way too loud and it really ruins the video. And I was like, I was like, if I invited you to my house for dinner and I made you spaghetti, or whatever, you know, if I made you a meal and I said, How would you how do you enjoy the meal? Would you say, Yeah, it was good, but the sauce sucked, so I didn't really like it? Or would you just shut up and just finish the meal because it's made for you? You know? Dude, that could be the worst spaghetti ever. I'm gonna eat it and I'm gonna say thank you. I could you throw me. up half you an know? hour later, I don't care. But you fed me, you know? And yeah. I I or I'm gonna say thank you. And the next time you invite me to dinner, I'm going to politely decline, you know? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. that's okay. That's that's how it should be. The fact that people want to get... And I hate to do this to people too, but I always have to do this. You are one person out of 32,000 people that are following. Yeah. Does your opinion... Do you really think I'm going to listen to you? When your video... When you have 500 people that watch you lip sync a trending sound every day, Yep. And I'm making original content. Now I sit in my bed overthinking if I'm going to make it, how I'm going to make it, all this and that. Do you really, really think I'm going to take yours when clearly my content's been working? You mm-hmm. know? So you might as well just shut up. <laughs> yep. Keep that to yourself. And my thing is, too, and we, we were talking about how competitive this is, or how competitive we are with podcasting or TikToking. If I saw a TikToker doing something better than or doing better than me, and you said this yourself too. You're like, when you see some people that are posting and they have their higher numbers, and you're like, 
oh, that person is good, but I can crush them because I can do this. You know? Mm -hmm. If you see me doing better than you, but I'm doing something wrong, then don't tell me. Let me bury myself in the ground and you don't make that mistake. So you blow up bigger than me. Yep. Yep. It's that easy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, man. I uh, The problem is so, like, almost all of those comments truly are just people crying for help that's it people are especially now man people are angry people are like they have no outlet they're just like i want to spew hate somewhere because my life Ooh. sucks and Ooh. if my ship is sinking i'm taking down everyone else's ship with me and yep. unfortunately that's like that it's just the thing creators have to deal with i wish you didn't because there's no real place for it it just seems like such a waste of energy. And like, you have a great mentality about it. A lot of people don't, unfortunately, like it, it consumes people and not just for TikTok, like YouTube, Instagram, even on the, like take comedy, for example, on the road, when people will blatantly just go, Hey, you suck live scream mm -hmm. in their face. It's something they've worked forever for. It's, it's weird. It's a weird time to be in because people just have the audacity. Yep. And there's no, like, especially, the thing is, the thing that blows my mind, and it's like, you said it best, too, you're like, a lot of, like, I've got to a point where it's like, I have 32,000 people watching me, there's going to be 10 people, 20 people that don't like, uh, that's what it is, you know? Mm -hmm. But those, like, to the girl that just got to 1,000 followers, and to the boy that just got to 1,000 followers, and it's over the moon, because they have had the worst upbringing, whatever, this and that, you know, and this has been the only thing that's helped them. When they receive that, this is a trash video, you're fat, whatever it is, that is going to break them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I always say. I'm like, if you are the reason that a mother loses their child, how will you sleep at it? And you thought you were funny. Yeah. You thought you were it, funny. Well, it's, yeah, that's the sad thing, right? Is like, especially if you're a young kid, dude, like when we're, we're still fairly young, when we were growing up, we still didn't have like Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok. We didn't have any of that. And I'm thankful for it because if I were to make a post and get some of the comments that I've gotten or that you have gotten, if I was like in elementary school reading this shit, I would have tried to end my life too. And it's really sad to say, but like, it, it's, it's tough. Cause when you're a kid, you so can't, tough. you can't like, take into account that it's like oh that's just a sad person on the other end of the screen and that's not real life when you're a kid you're like that is life that's my whole life right there and they're saying i'm fat and this and this matters like you it's hard it, and even, even as an adult it's hard to realize that people just say things you know mm -hmm. it's it's hard to fathom that because like okay but like there has to be a reason why they said it and there isn't like that's the, thing. the reason they said it is because they're so sick and upset with their own lives that they need a place to put their own hatred on someone else. But you don't know that when you're 15 years old. No, I didn't learn that until I was 19 years old or however old I was. You know what I mean? Like there wasn't anyone telling me like, yo, like people are just gonna people are gonna act out because you're acting like you're doing you're doing well for yourself, so people are gonna hate. I didn't know that. You know, mm -hmm. and it's got like that's why I said it's sad that I'm desensitized to it because. I literally go, now I just go through my comments looking for because it makes me laugh now. Now I'm like, wow, like, look at this person. Like, I would I always tell people, if I had enough time to go out and hit on other people, I would be so rich because I would not use that time to go and hit on people. I'd go make some money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. And it's like that's that's a very mature mindset I had to grow into. A lot of people aren't that. And like, the fact of the matter is, man. Like, I'm an, I'm an old person when it comes to TikTok, realistically. Not an old person, but, like, I'm not as young as majority of these people blowing up, you know? Mm -hmm. So, like, and you got, like, like Charlie D'Amelio, you got, like, the Addison Rae. These girls have millions of followers. They're not even 20 yet, you know? Yep. And I'm sure someone's social media managing them so they don't see any of the comments, but they have to at some point. I'm sure, I'm sure they, the, the content is... Passing over, I'm sure they're getting DMs. I'm sure, I'm sure there's some crazy people that somehow figured out their phone. You know what I mean? Yep. That is what makes me sick. Like, 
This world yeah. wants to see people broken down so bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can you can equate that to like when Child Stars used to be a thing, like on the Disney Channel and stuff. And like you listen to them now, like you, you listen to Miley Cyrus or Demi Lovato or any of these people, and they're like, "Yeah, I was fucked up for a long time because I grew up in that toxic environment where people just hate you and are just spewing hate." I don't think people take into account what kind of toll that has on people. Like, and in the world of cyberbullying. It's so easy to just say, turn it off. But once you see that comment, it's lingering. You can turn it off. You could break your phone, throw it in the river, whatever. If you've seen that comment, you're done. Because your brain eats away at itself. Yep. Yep. And for example, this is is another one that, like, to me, we'll get into why it didn't bother me. But obviously, I, I always tell people on TikTok, I don't care if you find out where I live. But I'm never just gonna tell you where I live because I think it's tough. Like, I, why do you need to know where? I live? Mm-hmm. Um, so one day, some person got in my live stream. Like, you know, I saw you at Tim Hortons in this city. Like, next time I'm lining you out, you're done for. It. And like, I like sat in my bed and I was like, that's a really weird thing to say, you know? Like, as much like I didn't I didn't feel threatened, but it makes you feel weird when you walk to the grocery store. It's like, hey, you know, like, let's say like, who like, who am I gonna have to fight? You know what I mean? Like, and it's like. That was probably a fucking fifteen year old in high school. Yeah. You know? And it's just like why like what? Like why even put that into the world? Why would you say that? Yeah. No idea. But like what does that person commenting that gain? Nothing. Because if he does run into you, he's not gonna win. No. <laughs> no. I can no. assure you that a guy making a comment like that doesn't know how to fight. No. No, you're trying to scare me off the internet. Like what? Yeah, that's so that's yeah. so People strange. Are, and like, that's, no, go for it. Like, uh, if I was a young kid, that would have yeah. fucked my mind. If I was of a course. young kid, I would not go to Tim Hortons ever again. Yeah, I'd be scared. I'd be terrified to go to Tim Hortons. And like, well, that's just right down the street from me. You know what I mean? Oh, if you saw me there, you probably saw me walk home into my house. You know what I mean? Now I let the chop will fucking do it at the front door. I'm not worried about it. But yeah. like to a kid, like, man, that is so messed up. Like I can I am mad, like I can imagine a kid getting off of that TikTok live and never like just giving up after that. Mm-hmm. Fully. Because like I'm not trying to get, I'm not trying to die over what? Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. I'm just gonna stop and then that's exactly what this person wanted for whatever reason. People are sick, man. So, like, I, like, was, I think you were saying, like, I, it is my job now as a human being to just be like, you know, just do your thing. Another thing I'm realizing is there's opinions that you have. Don't let anybody, don't put out opinions that'll make people mad at you. You know what I mean? Like, not necessarily in the in the sense like like for example, I'll post anti racism stuff until the day I die. Like obviously there's things where it's like you shouldn't you should like if you're an advocate for these things, post it. But like mm-hmm. if you feel some way about a religion, don't give anyone a root because bro, there's so much hatred that like some of these thoughts you have and I don't have any of them, but luckily I can be an open open book. Um but there's just some things you can't say without people wanting to prove something, you know? And that's why I'm always like, I'm not a Toronto. Because when I go to Toronto and there's some, some hood man that wants to press me about, like, oh, where are you from? Where are you from? I'm like, I've, I've consistently said I'm an actor. You know what I mean? I have nothing to worry about. But you, once you start getting a little bit of traction, like, you just get these worries, you know? And that, and that is very, very tough on your mental. You know what I mean? Like, the, when you have to be so cautious about the way you say things that you don't even know what and what not to say, that's when you start to realize, that, like, okay, you know, this is this is actually social media is actually a crazy thing, and you brought it up too with like Miley Cyrus, Justin Bieber. Imagine the mistakes you made when you were sixteen, but there was paparazzi banging at your door. No. no, 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 no. Even when I was in like nineteen, twenty, no, no. Let me make my mistakes. No one needs to know about them. You know? Yes. That's that, but okay. That's like that. Oh, so, sorry. No, to no, cut no, you off, no, no, but, no, no, you're good. 
but like that's that's the thing with when we're talking about cancel culture i do not fuck with it and i i i'm i like the idea that we should all be equal and if someone says something off like off-putting or like racist or sexist or homophobic yes let's get them <laughs> i don't know yeah, like let's, let's call yeah let's call them out because there's no place for that in 2021 let alone any other year but when you're canceling someone for saying like oh that's gay when they were 12 on facebook no how what what are we doing no more, you're, te- more. you're you're teaching kids that they can't make a mistake no, no, especially like you said, right now, everyone has a 10 year old has Instagram and Twitter. Yeah, you know, they're gonna say something, bro. The amount of times where I've gone on Facebook and I've seen like a Facebook memory from 10 years ago, and I go, Holy fuck, how did I get away with that one? Yep, you know, mm-hmm. because I didn't know, you know, and like, luckily, at that point. I was one of, like, 15 people my age that had Facebook, you mm-hmm. know, because most kids weren't allowed. Now everyone in their, everyone in their stepchild or, like, their fucking grandson has a fucking Facebook account, yeah. you know? And like, people are, people are, you think about it, man. People are making Instagram accounts for their two-year-old babies, and they're getting 105,000 followers. Oh, my God. We can go off on this for hours. It's messed ago. up. It's messed up. Like, I hate that like people are bringing attention to children, mm-hmm. like especially as parents, man. As parents, obviously, there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. But please don't use your child as a way to get yourself some sort of game because your child, whether or not you like it, the second your child's gonna go from being your TikTok, Instagram post to their own being, they're gonna have that direct following crossover. You know what I mean? And now mm-hmm. it's not you moderating their Instagram, their TikTok. Everything's going to them. Yeah. Kids shouldn't have to deal with that. No. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Ki- kids, kids should be able to be kids, and they're just not right now. Yeah. No. Like, it, it's weird, man. And they're feeding, like, like when I, ugh, I don't even know how to put it. It's just, it's a weird feeling when you see a kid addicted to Instagram and they're like 10 mm-hmm. and they're not going outside and they're not playing street hockey or sh- like pickup basketball man or, hunt. or manhunt or they're not going into the forest behind your house and playing with friends and throwing rocks in the river. Like they're on Instagram or on TikTok liking things and watching things that their little brains should never see. Like, like imagine never see. Uh, if you, if you want to talk about like fucked up exposure, like, like the porn that kids are able to access now is insanity. Yep. yep. It's so easy. Yep. And, and, and bro, think about this. How many times have you scrolled through TikTok and it's a, it's a girl promoting their own retail? Which, hey, get your money. Get your money. I, I'm not hating on that. I respect that to the whole degree. Like, I'm no issue. But, but my issue is that's going to end up on a seven-year-old free speech. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And although I do think OnlyFans is an awesome way for you to make money, I don't think it should be promoted to a young child. That feels of course like, not. Oh, just wait until I turn 18. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Then I can make all this money. It's like, yeah, but you could do something else. And these girls have these girls are at an age where they they know the consequences of being an old person. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. I support that because yes, you're gonna make money, but you are people are gonna be able to view you naked at the search of your name on Google. For the yeah. rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Because you can't you can't convince me, you can't convince me that every successful only fan girl you can't convince me that you can't find those pictures for free on Reddit. you can't convince me well that's i've never really understood the whole only thing like i'm all for people making money like if bro if you look good and there's a way to make money off it fucking do it why not yeah. but i i've yeah. never understood the whole it's you know it's secret like can't people 
like obviously you shouldn't but can't like shitty people just screenshot it yep yep oh yeah all the time screenshot it whatever it is which is pretty messed up but like yeah yeah you can if you're listening don't fucking do that That's yeah don't cool. you dare do it that's <laughs> shitty but like <laughs> yeah don't please don't do it but like yeah it's it's weird and you, you made a great point like the girls who are on only fans now understand what uh, what they're doing like they're like yeah i'm posting i'm making money off it there's a risk I'm making good money i don't really care yeah. good for you seriously that's that's amazing and if i was a really attractive guy i would be doing sorry if i was a really in shape attractive dude i'd be doing <laughs> the exact same thing yeah. if, if there was a demand for it let's go but when you're a kid and you're like 12 or 15, you shouldn't be given the option to make a decision like that. No. I was watching, I was listening to a podcast and um, it, it's with a host. Her name's Candace and she, she's a porn star oh. and she had another porn star on and they were talking and they were like, there are some girls in porn who are like 17 and they're like, but the, the age to drink is 21. You shouldn't be able to make a life-changing decision like porn when you're that young. Because you could do, this is exactly what they said. I, I want to give credit because this isn't my idea. But you could make one terrible video for one bootleg company, like some some nobody. That's still on the internet, man. Mm -hmm. That one video is, they it can be found. Mm-hmm. And if you're older, if you're 21 or older and you understand the consequence, by all means, go for it. If that's what you want to do, no one should be able to stop you. No. But when you're 17 or 16 or young and you don't know the consequences and you still do it, like you should never be able to be given that off. Like I, I, I always say, let people be people, but like, you know, you got, you got to understand the consequences. And when you're that young, you just don't. Because you you're young, you're dumb, you're stupid. You know, exactly, exactly. You just do things because, like, like, the amount of people, like, yeah, like, exactly. It's like, the amount of, like, the people you look up to, too, you know what I mean? Like, how, like how many, like, I'm, like, obviously, she's doing her thing, and that's my thing, like, that's, if you're doing your thing, I can't talk to somebody, but, like, Tana, Mongo, or Mongo, however you say her name, I don't know why she's famous. I don't know why little girls look up to her, but they do. Um, She's not, like, like, She's one of those girls where it's like she kind of promotes a kind of negative lifestyle. And, like, like yeah, you can be like her, but the amount of hatred she re hate receives, you gotta, you gotta understand, man. Like, there's nothing you do in this world that doesn't come without a consequence. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And yep. especially something like OnlyFans, man. Like, are you come? Think about as a kid, how many times did you just Google your own name for fun? A trillion. Okay, so now, so now let's say let's say for example let's say my girlfriend hypothetical makes a makes a uh an only fans when she, like when we're when we're both in high school you know what i mean we have a kid we grow up we, my kid googles their name catches the last name and now my kid has seen my wife naked because of something that she posted when she was 18 yeah 19. she never thought it would come to this but it has because you can just find them on Google. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Scary. Well, it, when and when you're that young, and even like I, I experience this as now too, and I, I'm sure you do as well. Like I can't really see that far into the future, like because I'm young. I, I have that young dude mentality where it's like everything is now. I um like I have tunnel vision, and I always internally have a plan. I'm working on that because sometimes it's great. And then other times when your plan doesn't go according to what you think it's going to, it can be detrimental or it can be like devastating. Sorry. For sure. But I can't like, if I make a decision and especially when I was 17, if I were to make a decision, I wasn't thinking, how is this going to affect me in 25 years? Nope. How could you? How could you? Exactly. You can't fathom living that long because you have that young guy mentality. Um, Another thing to think about is like, what do you like? What do you remember from 15 years ago? You know what I mean. There's a lot of things you've forgotten about 15 years ago. So you think to yourself, oh well, I could do this now, and like no one's gonna know about it. 
in 20 years. Well, guess what? They, they just might. You well, know, the inter- yeah, the internet was one click away, man. Back yep. back when there was no internet, sure, would it be mm-hmm. fine? Mm-hmm. But everything's the there. Public. And another thing that scares me, dude, is like you, as whether or not you realize it, you are on a camera twenty four hours a day. Yep. Maybe maybe twenty two. Right now, I'm on a camera. Right now, I was gonna say right now, I'm not on a camera. I'm on a second camera. But when you go to the grocery store. How do you know you're not in someone's Snapchat? Plus the fact that you're on someone's security camera. Mm-hmm. Plus that when you walk outside, there's a security camera outside. Not like it's like I came to realize it because like I'm not that I'm planning to do a crime, but like whenever you watch like first forty eight, you see how many different cameras they can access from the point of their murder to when the murderer goes to wherever he's going. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mind you, I'm not a murderer, but Everything you do can be caught on some sort of camera, and if you, people have a reason to save it, they will. Yeah, you know, and it could be the creepy old man that lives beside you. It could be the grocery store worker that recognized your face and wanted to just go on the cameras and take a picture to prove that you were there. You know what I mean? It's as bad as it sounds. Like people be like, "Oh, you're such a conspiracy." Like, no, I just know this. Yeah. Like, I understand. Like, everything you do can be tracked, and like. I couldn't I couldn't see that before and luckily like you said, when we were younger, there just wasn't a way to be tracked as easily. But now that everyone everyone is on their phone, like there's no more I can't wait to go home and go on my computer. That's mm-hmm. not a thing anymore. Yep. Remember when you were a kid you can't wait to go home, sit through my dial up internet, nobody can phone call me because my internet's gonna crash and then Dude. I'm gonna play addicting games or mini clubs. I, I was so excited every day. I was like, I'm going to go to Zoo Tycoon. I'm going to play it. I'm going to build the zoo. I'm going to treat my animals right. I would think all day about it. I was so excited. But now it's like, oh, but my phone's in my pocket. Yeah. So. It, it's wow. it's a weird time. Like when I think we were the, like the last real age group that kind of eased into technology. We had it lucky. Like we came, I think the internet had just begun. Mm-hmm. I think it was just starting to be a thing. Mm-hmm. And then we kind of, we still had the opportunity to be a kid and go out mm-hmm. and do everything and like computer on the weekends, if we were good that week, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but kids now they're born with the phone in their hand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like on the flip side, I, I get it because like you want to like, you can, you want to make sure your kids safe. you know, you want sure, when yeah. your kids, when your kids walking home from school and something goes wrong, you want them to be able to call you, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like, I wish every little kid had a flip phone. Yeah, you know, I don't want a kid to have a smartphone anymore. You know, mm-hmm. because man, there's just too much that you're gonna come across that you don't want to, and it's like, or that you don't even realize you don't want to, man. Like, like, oh, oh, yeah, it's sad, man. It's really sad. Like, social media is a social media, the internet, it is very dangerous, and I always say to people. I'm very lucky to have attracted the crowd at the age I did, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. I'm more of a person that's like, I understand what I post, there could be repercussions, so I don't post things that are going to cause an issue. Um, There's going to be things that I want to post that I just can't, you know? And there's going to be things that I think that I just shouldn't post. People don't get that when you're younger than you, you know what I mean? And I see a lot of kids shooting themselves in the foot because... They said something. They posted something. It's like, you gotta, you can't, you can't. And, ah, yeah, yeah. No, kids should not be allowed on, even on TikTok, man. But even I see that sometimes. I'll be like, so, like, what's everyone doing tonight? Like, my TikTok stream. I'll be what's everyone doing tonight? Oh, I'm mad homework and I gotta go to bed. My mom's telling me to. I'm like, wait, what? You know, like, what are you doing in my live stream? Yeah. Like, like, like what grade are you in? Oh, I'm in grade six, bro. I didn't have my phone until the end of grade nine. Yeah. What are you doing in my live stream? You know, but it's just that's a life we love. So. It's a life we love. Man, that's insane. I had a point that I was gonna say, and I completely forget what the point was. I do this fairly often. No, I'm. I'm I, have, I have so much to say. It's verbal diarrhea, man. So I feel. Like <laughs> Yeah, seriously. <laughs> well, 
This is what I was going to say. So I made the video with my friend Brady, or you know Brady. What am I oh, talking yeah. about? Yeah, I made a video with Brady for my um, my one year anniversary of YouTube yeah. uh, on Omegle, right? And I didn't realize how fucked up Omegle is, kind of. Like there was one, there's one point where a dude will come on and he's just jerking off, and his We're face isn't watch. in the camera. It's just a dude jerking it. And then the next person we see are girls that are like five years old. And I'm like, this is this is a very not okay range. No, <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Like what? Like, and how it's many- not, like it's not filtered. No. <laughs> it's all there. They, they say it is, but it's not. It's no. Not. It's not. It's There's so no weird. And um, the, the sad thing is you can't even blame the parents. They don't know. No. A lot of parents, if you tell them about Omegle now, they're like, what's that? Yeah. What's what's the chat roulette? What's that? You know? And like, and like, yeah, that's the thing too, man. Is that like, because like you went on Omega like recently. I know for a fact, without even asking you, that wasn't your first time on that website. I used to go on that shit for fun as a kid. Dude, I was like 12. Yeah. On that. yeah. Even if it was just the chat section. Yeah, I, like, I would ask for their kick. Yeah, yeah, me too. Same thing. Like, I was that kid, and it's like, at that age, at that age, it's happening to you, so you don't see what's wrong. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, weird, I went on Omega and saw a dick. Now that I'm fucking my age that I am, and I know that the kids the age that I was, I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with this? Mm-hmm. Because, it's weird. Oh, I don't even get why people are doing that. Like, why are you taking it? That's so fucked. Yeah, that's that's I I will never understand that. First of all, there is nothing, there's nothing to gain for either party when you are jerking it on camera, unprompted, unwanted. I'm telling you right now, if you are listening to this and your hobby is jerking off on Omegle, no Cut one it wants it. You're Not a fucking single, weirdo. You're a weirdo. Like <laughs> no girl is going on Omegle and thinking I cannot wait. To watch a dude jerk it. No girl. Bro, and hey, to double up on that, no girl likes dick pics. None That's of them. That's true. Zero None. girls. Zero girls. We get I've never sent coming. one. I've never sent uh, one. I don't think I have either. But mm, zero girls. Zero girls want you to. Yeah. I've talked to too many girls that have been like, yeah, he sent me a dick pic. Like, what a weirdo. I'm like, oh, true. Yeah, like, you know, that is actually very weird. Like, what would you gain from that? Well, I mean, no. that's, that, that's, that's always the question I ask because I've never considered it ever in my entire life, but sometimes I'll think like, what would happen if I did? Oh. And I just think like, nobody would gain anything. No. The girl's eyes would probably melt no, yeah. in a negative way. And they'd then probably have I to would use just... their zoom feature on me, whatever. <laughs> yeah, they, they would need to like <laughs> pinch and go like that. Or, like, oh, I have to zoom got... in really tight. And then I would just feel like shit. No one gains that. anything. And then yeah. your dick is out there. Out there. Because you don't know. Bro, the scariest thing is that I've seen people that they're like, will open Snapchat on this phone and be like. Yeah, that's fucked up. That's no so screenshot, fucked up. No screenshot notification. Yeah, no, that's that's messed up. That's I, so I know people who have done that too. It's so wrong. It's like, yeah, what are you, like, why are you doing that? Like, why are you doing that? Like, what? Are, especially because. Oh, Nudes. Weird. So like, why? Yeah. Why? And you're just, uh, you're weird. You're weird. I remember it's there was a, what? No, it's better, go it's better in person, guys. Just stop. Facts. Just stop. <laughs> I, I remember I was once, I don't remember who I was with, but I was called a weirdo for saying I didn't want nudes. My, like, people were like, did you ask her for them? I was like, no. They're like, ew, why? I'm like, that's my girlfriend. Like, I don't need a picture. Yeah, what? Like, yeah. That's so like, dumb. Yeah. I- yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what? Why do I need a picture? Yeah, no. It's yeah, I see her weird. all the time, you fucking weirdos. You just want me to get a picture so I can show you, and I'm not going to, so you need a Exactly, yeah. yeah, no. I'm never going to show you. <laughs> not a chance. Oh, uh, bro, that's, uh, that's just another thing why I fucking Snapchat all the shit is just so weird. Yeah. yeah. Social media by itself is so weird. I was actually, I was talking to my dad about it recently and he was talking about like, we probably will have to put something into effect, like a tax or something. Like you get like 
four hours free and then any other exposure to it is just taxed because he kind of compared it to the whole cigarette movement and like how they tax Mm. cigarettes now because we found out it was unhealthy for us dude the mental health impact that social media has i don't even think we fully understand it it's still kind of a new thing we're gonna realize it in like 10 years like they're doing research now they're gonna get the results back they're gonna be like oh fuck Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not saying I realize like along the lines of just like realizing shit is like, they say like you're not supposed to look at social media within like the first hour of you waking up, mm-hmm. and it totally makes sense. Like, of course, you can see one thing on social media at eight in the morning that ruins your whole day. Yep, I do it. Or, I'm not. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Hands up here, man. Like I'm, I'm fucking as guilty as it comes. It's, it's in, yeah, it's just, it just takes one thing and you're so like, you're still half asleep. You're like, uh, your day's ruined already. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, one thing kind of like segue into like, cause we were talking about like other people's effect, like how other people on social media can be bad for mental health, but that kind of like leeways into like kind of another thing that we were talking about, like numbers wise, cause numbers are horrible for your mental health. Like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, for example, like I'll make a good TikTok post and I'll wake up in the morning and I'll have like 30 new notifications. And like in my head, I was going to wake up to, like 300 new notifications and boom, you know, yep. Yep. boom, your day's fucked. Yep. For what? For what reason? Like when like literally, um, I don't know, like 40,000 people have saw your TikTok and now you're upset that like 3,000 more haven't. Mm-hmm. Your whole day is bummed about that, and you're gonna go about your day like thinking like I need to make a post better than I did last night. I need to. It's like well, your whole day is bummed. Yeah, yeah. Like numbers are horrible. Numbers are, and that's that's what I want to tell people. Like if if you are listen, if you're listening and you want to start something or you have started something and you're very discouraged because of numbers and you you're thinking of quitting, don't. Like the whole numbers thing is just. And I, it happens to me all the time. I'll get, I'll have one podcast come out. That's like maybe five or 10 listens less than the other ones. And I'm like, Oh, what happened? Yeah. Like you can't overthink it. And that's why I really loved when Instagram, like got rid of the like option. Mm-hmm. It's like, good. We don't need that garbage. Like no. you're going to beat yourself up because you get a hundred likes as opposed to this quote unquote Instagram influencer who gets like ten thousand, which are probably yeah. paid for by the way. Well, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. or it's all just weirdos that are asking for feet picks and DMs. Yeah. You know? It's numbers are weird, man. You can't let that get to you. And it, I it, it, when you're young and a creator, like when you're like we've said this entire time, when you're like 15 or 16 and you're a creator and you're like your whole world are those numbers. Yep. You're like, Entirely. my success is only determined by how many likes this post gets on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Like, it's no. weird. It's not. And it's not. And like, yeah, like, oh, I now, you know, I built myself here. A thought of slipping away slowly and slowly. And slowly. Um, you were saying about numbers. I'm just trying to rewind where we were here. Um, numbers. Oh, and about starting. Um, yeah. Yeah. Are your numbers? And like, one thing I've noticed too is like, what helps me with that is, so I have two phones. I have a phone that's kind of like my business phone. That kind of that I have a social media phone, and then I have my phone. And my phone ha- that it has all the social media on it, but not a single notification goes to it other than text and Snapchat. Mm-hmm. My business phone gets all my Instagram, whatever, all that other stuff, because I don't need to be walking outside. With my friends and look at my phone and be like, oh, I got I got six new likes on Instagram. I'm gonna check that. I don't need that. Yeah, there's that doesn't as much as that feels gratifying. Like a lot for one, especially on TikTok, a lot of those views are bots. They're not even real people. Mm-hmm. That and like same with Instagram. How many times have you gotten a DM where it's like, hey, want to see some sexy pictures? Go to this like, just send me your social insurance number and I'll like what? And you I know? give it every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now my credit card's being used in Taiwan, but at least I got those pictures 
Um, God. <laughs> nudes. Um, yeah, it's like, don't, like, numbers don't matter. And, like, what really started mattering to me is when people would message me, like, I say this to everyone. You can have as many views, you can have as many likes as you want, but until someone reaches out to you and says, hey, you made a post on a day where I was having a horrible day and it made me feel way better about myself. That's what matters. Human mm-hmm. interaction matters way more than numbers. And I will stand by that till the day I die. I don't care if my video gets 10 views. If three of those people hit me up and they're like, wow, this is really funny. I needed this last day. I've done my job. Yeah. You've done your job as a human. People don't, like we were saying about clickbait and stuff. People want humans. You know? Mm-hmm. People want to know that humans exist. Internet, TV, movie, those are personas. Um, yep. That's, like I was saying before about the Fortress stuff. There's a, at a point in my day, I'm done being the person I'm not. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm done with it. I've given up. Because I post a TikTok as a persona, then I sit back down as me. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't carry over. Because once it does, it is so easy to lose track of yourself and who you are as a person, what you stand for, by just using social media too much. It's mm-hmm. way too easy to become a product of what people want you to be rather than you being you. Yeah. So. Yeah, people, that's especially like you're talking about the lockdown and the insanity that people are exposed to now with the news and everything that's going wrong in the world, which there's more than enough. Mm-hmm. People just want, not a friend even, but like just someone that they can kind of relate to mm-hmm. because you're seeing this every morning. Like mo- let's just assume the majority of the population wakes up and checks their phone and looks at like the bad news that's out there because bad news sells and it's always at the top of the charts. Unavoidable. Yeah. It, it's, it's so sad, but l- let's say you wake up and you don't really have any friends and you see like, l- let's take the whole really sad Dante Wright situation. No, sir. L- let's take that situation. You read that and you have no one to go to about it and you just feel alone and helpless. And like, maybe you don't feel safe anymore. It's like people just want to talk and let steam out. Yeah, that's all they want. That's why, like, you see, you saw such a de- decline in celebrities during this pandemic because mm-hmm. no one needs that right now. No one gives a shit about no, how big can. and expensive your house is. Nope. Like, Tell I'm me how worried about inexpensive about... your house is. That's yeah, what I like, care about. Yeah, or like, like I'm worried about feeding my. Ch- I'm not actually, but like, let's say someone else. I'm worried about feeding my children. I don't know how mm-hmm. I'm going to get that money. And I'm over here on Instagram seeing your big house with a pool and a tiger. Like, I don't want to see that. It's not real. Like, you're no. struggling. You're struggling inside of that big house. And I know. Of course. So show me that. Yeah. You know? And, like, that was one thing, like, when I started doing Twitch, like, doing Twitch stuff, like, the amount of times, like, I've told people, like, oh, thank you for donating to my stream. Like, that donation, you just got my dog another bag of food. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I'm not going to pretend, like, and the money I'm getting isn't like helping me actually like, live. Like I'm not like this chain is fake, guys. It's not. This isn't solid gold. It's depth, you know. Like it's, yep. it won't turn my neck green, but it's not solid. Like I'm not. Like, I'm not. This is. I wear. I dress how I dress. This is me, and I put myself on the internet as me because I know for a fact you. It's it's hard to be someone you're not. It's mm. hard, and like. I think that's one thing I always told people. They're like, what's one thing that you really like acting? It's like, the reason I love acting is because you learn more about yourself being someone you're not. And, like, people will want you to be something, and if you keep being that person, by the time you show them who you are, they're like, oh, you're kind of whack, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, I I don't want people to be surprised when I'm like, oh, like, sorry, I I wasn't on today because, like, my mental health is kind of in routes, you know? Like, I don't want people to be like, oh, really? Like, oh, yeah. Oh, I, th- I thought you were an SK Luchana man. Like, no, I'm not. Like, behind, the, behind this facade, I'm a human being. That's why yeah. 
yeah, that's that. Sorry, keep going. Sorry. No, 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 no. You're good. You're good. But I was at that's that's like. But I I am a human being, and that's what I want to present to you more. So like, I'm a human being, and this is what I can do, and this is what I I do for fun. Uh, at the end of the day, I want you to know who I am, not the person that I want it to be evident that I'm not what I create. You know. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. It's like, well, it's like an actor in a movie. It's like, I'm not actually John Wick. No. Like, don't expect me to be. No, not at but, all. But that, that what you just said with the whole, you want to be you on social media because you don't want people to be like, oh, wait, that's really you. That is the exact reason why I don't fuck with Tinder. I hate Tinder. Like yep. it, because it's all, first of all, it's all superficial. You're swiping right mm-hmm. on looks which mm-hmm. when has that ever gone well for anybody? Um, and then you can like formulate the perfect message. You have all the time in the world to think about the right thing to say, but then you get in person and you're like, yeah, that's not actually who I am. And then you start being yourself. And then the person you're with is like, who is that? That is why I don't fuck. Cause I, I it, that happened to me. Oh. Like I'll, I'll be someone completely different through my message and then we'll meet face to face and I'm saying stuff that they're like, that's not you. It's like, actually yep. it is me. You don't know me. <laughs> oh. And I tell that to people all the time. Like, I have a lot of issues with like, like even like when we were kids, like remember when you'd have to do like a presentation for the class and like the person that would present was so different from the person that you spoke to after the presentation, mm-hmm. you know, like we have to stop teaching ourselves to not be ourselves. You know, yep. like, sure, like when I'm when I'm talking like business with people, with creators, with whoever, I'm I'm gonna talk a little bit more formal, but you're still gonna. The only thing that's really gonna change is like I'm probably gonna swear less. You know, yeah, yep. that's gonna be the difference because I don't want you buying into something that's not me mm-hmm. because like it's gonna crash and burn. It's gonna crash and burn. Like, and same with Tinder. Same with Tinder. That's why, like, I'm, I'll be, I'll be honest. I've been on that app before, and like, that's the thing. It's like you're gonna match with someone, and then, especially for me, man. Especially for me, like when I was TikToking, the amount of people that would match with me and just have a preconceived notion because they've seen me on TikTok. Yeah. And it's like I'm actually nothing like that. You know, like I'm funny. Like I'll make people laugh. But, like I'm actually when I'm in a room with people and I'm not comfortable, I'm silent. I'm not gonna go out of my way to be a clown. Like. I'm very much like I'm a I'm, I'm a listener. Like my buddy taught me when I was not too long ago. You you have two eyes, two ears, and one mouth. You should listen and see twice as much as you speak. And I've I've taken that with me for a long time. And like, I'm not always the person that wants to be like yo know, like entertaining people. You know what I mean? Because I spend all day on TikTok trying to entertain people. There's an off point. So that's that. Yeah, like, there's a, there's a time where you just need to be like fuck it. Like, this is. This is me, and if you're not doing that, you're gonna be going down a very dark path. And it does, it's not. There's no longevity in playing a character. You know what no, I mean? No. It it it's weird that we um we treat people weird when they want to be themselves. Like people almost view it as a way to judge people. It's like, oh, you're ch- being true to who you are. Ugh. It's like why. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like let them be them mm-hmm. it's weird it, it's a weird kind of thing where the, people would rather see your persona than who you actually are mm-hmm. for sure and like the thing like even even now like, especially on tiktok like, when i see like a video of someone like dancing as hard as they can and like it'll kind of like make me laugh it's like wow this person's actually like, going hard dancing right now you know what i mean like what and then like it might not even be good dancing. And then I'll send it out to my friends, like, because I find it funny. And then I'll always follow up with, I love this guy, you know? Because mm-hmm. do you know how hard it is to make content that you know in your head isn't the best, but it is fulfilling to you? You know what I mean? And you yeah. posted that for thousands of people to see, hundreds of thousands of people to see. Hats off to you, man. Mm-hmm. You know? Because yeah. I don't have the guts to do that. I, I guess I did at a point when I was just posting whatever on TikTok, but like, it's not easy to just be like, whatever, I'll post this. You yeah. know, it's, it's not, it's not that. So I, people, if you're a person out there, I know we're breaking the third wall a lot, but like, if you're just generally out here doing your own thing, 
round of applause to you, man, because you're doing a lot better than someone that isn't going to do the same. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And it's really like, if you're not that, like, it's okay, I guess. Like, it, it's it's so intimidating to be your true self on social media. I think mostly because it's hard to really fathom the level of exposure that you get on it. Like when, when you're acting, like when I was in theater, like I would present in front of a group of, I don't know, 50, a hundred people. And Ooh. my family was there. And even then I was like, <gasps> like uh, sometimes I'd get like that anxiety before I was like, Oh my God, I, I can't believe I'm doing this. When you're posting on the internet, that's like billions of people Ooh. and you can't fathom it. It's, it's like, it's so scary. It's like when you when you think about the ocean. I don't fuck with the ocean. No, I, I, not me I, neither, bro. Yeah, I, I don't fuck with the ocean at all. But if you're like, it, it's almost like if you're like treading water in the middle of the ocean. It's like this big wide space that you're just terrified of. So it's hard to be yourself. Yeah, it's hard not to. Yeah, if you're in that, if you're in the middle of the ocean, how are you not gonna panic? You know, you have no. <sighs> No land in sight. I don't even want to think about that's disgusting. Oh my god, but... dude! I'm gonna throw. <laughs> you're, a you're a swimmer. Yeah, I'm a swimmer you're too. Eh? Much better than me. Oh. <laughs> no. So like, yeah, like it's 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 a lot. But and like, yeah, like you said, like there's nothing. If you're still at that point where you're like, I don't know if I can do it. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that too. So just understand your favorite creator, the people you look up to were in your spot at a point. You know? Mm. There was a point where I was like, I'm not gonna do it. especially TikTok, man. Still to this day, I'm like, I'm on TikTok, my friends are like, Oh, really? I'm like, Yeah, they're like, Well, I don't know how What is what is other people that feel like they have like three hundred IQ because they don't have TikTok phone? Like, yeah. oh, you have that? I don't There have. there's a lot of people oh, like sick, that. Man. Yeah, there's a lot of people like that. They're like, oh, you actually go on TikTok? <laughs> I'm like, what's a kid's app? It's like, okay. <laughs> There's a lot of 25 year olds on there. Mm -hmm. As long as your for mm -hmm. you page is like of... curated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a yeah, there's a lot of people. And like what I've taught myself too is like the reason why TikTok is the most effective thing and why I bought into it so much is because during the pandemic. Everything moved to Zoom, right? Mm -hmm. You need to teach yourself how to be good on a camera. Yep. Because it would be easy for you and I to just sit here like this. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like I'm on TikTok, you know. Like it's it's fun, you know. Like, but who? Like, and so now now you you translate that to okay, you have to do a work presentation. Um, yeah, this is the data I've 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 found. You know, we're moving into an age where you need to be good on a camera mm -hmm. because we can't be in public. Or and like, and Gary V once again said that too. He's like, you just need to. Social media is going to keep evolving, and the people that are willing to evolve with it will always be ahead of the people who are. Yeah. So if I got to be on this kids app doing my thing, but now I walk to Tim Hortons and little kids are asking me for pictures with them, I'm gonna do that. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's. There's no like. Don't be. Don't let other people's preconceived notions of what's going on decide whether or not you do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, man. I I've done a couple speaking things on Zoom, and I'm doing one later where it's like this um, antidepressant company in Canada. It's like one of the top ones. I have to present to all their staff, and it's just if you don't know how to work in front of a camera, like. How do you do it? You can't. You're bad. Yeah. You're bad. You, can, you literally cannot. Like, you literally cannot. And, like, you can try as hard as you want. It's like, it's the same as anything else. Like, if I handed you a fucking accordion and said, yo, play me a song, are you going to play me a song or is it going to sound messed up? Well, you haven't practiced, so it's going to be whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's no difference between that and sitting on a camera and present or sitting sitting out of camera and presenting or, or whatever it may be, you know what I mean? Like, we need practice in these things. And that's another thing about, like, being vulnerable and posting your stuff on social media. But, like, the more you're, like, 
how many things like like this is a question for you, but like, since you started podcasting, have other things in your life become a lot easier? What do you like, mean? Like, let's say, like, if you're in a if, if you're in a group of people, are you more confident in yourself that you'll be able to entertain them versus before you went on this? Because now you've had so much exposure to, like, I think like if I can sit here and entertain you on a camera, then I can get with you in person. I can like lights out. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of how I view myself. Or like if I have to do some like hard presentation, since I've been on TikTok or since I've been on camera for so long, I can do that more comfortably because. This is just part of my everyday life, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of kind of my thing is like you can by taking one step and being like vulnerable, just getting used to feeling vulnerable. I think that's kind of what I'm trying to get here is that like if you're if you're on the on the on the edge of trying to decide whether you want to content create, you getting past that anxiety in one thing will now like get rid of that anxiety when you're trying to do anything else new or unfamiliar to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I've definitely felt that. I felt a lot more comfortable. I've also, um, it's weird. I've, I've felt this new desire to learn because I'm doing shit that I actually care about, which I was never taught in school. Unfortunately, yeah. um, a lot of the things I learned in school weren't really relevant to anything like, you know, cause I was in biology and I love that stuff. And I love learning about animals and learning about the biology between animals and stuff. But when I have to do a course on statistics or physics, no, no knock on either of those, because if you can do those, then good on you. And if that's your passion, wow, but yeah. I could never like, could, yeah. like that's, that's really great. Like it's really good. Rocket science. I, yeah. Like, like we need people like that. And if that's your thing, man, hats off to you. I'm not interested in that stuff. And it was a requirement. So now that I have like the mm-hmm. flexibility to talk to people and learn things I want to learn, it's been really nice. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And like, well, that's the same thing with me with acting. It's like, I had a lot of issue with the politics of acting. Like when people, what people don't realize is like, you could, I was talking this on, uh, on uh, Hey, Hi, Who Are You? When I was on their podcast, I was like, you could be, I could work my, my life off to be the best actor in the role of Harry Potter. But since I look like Hagrid, I'm going to play Hagrid. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's, like, it sucks. But now that I've put myself in a position where it's like, okay, I can be the main character of everything. It doesn't matter who the main character is because I made it up. You know, like, this is making me more excited to try new characters because I'm not just put into a box because I'm tall and a barely human being, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's interesting how much more exciting, interesting, and just like eager you are to learn about your craft when you're in full control of exactly how to tailor it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, that's why, that's why like the, the whole future looks so nice because now it's so easy to self-employ. It's so easy to do things that you want because the opportunities are out there. And with the internet, like you could do anything you want realistically. Um, I mean, you should find a way to monetize it, but even if you don't like there, you can do anything you want and you're, you're changing the narrative of you have to fit in that box. Like you mentioned, like a lot of us often, we just fall into the box and just stay there forever and we're cool with it. And I don't like, I don't know mm-hmm. if that's your thing, then sure. I don't want to be in a box forever. Mm-hmm. I don't want people telling me what I can and can't do or telling myself what I can and can't do. That doesn't sound desirable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Like if, if you're listening to this and you you're in that box and you're kind of, you know, putting yourself down because you're like, Oh, this is all I'll ever be. It doesn't have to be true, man. No. Um, I'll, I'll put it even more into perspective for you from a young age. Like I'm, I've been built big my whole life. Like I'm just a, a large human being. So throughout my whole life, like Everyone's been like, yo, you should be a blog guy, you know, like, oh, you should work security, like all this mm-hmm. and that. And, and or you should be a football player. And it got to the point where it was like, I was playing football and I didn't even like it, but because I was built like this, like, everyone would be like, yo, man, like honestly, like you put on a helmet, you put on shoulder pads, whatever, you put your gear on, you can get offers anywhere just by how you're built. And that's like, okay, but like and like for time that was cool to me. It's like I'll get paid big. I'll play football my whole life. That's awesome. I'm, I'm here for it. 
then I got to a point where I was like, I hate practice. I don't like going to practice. I like playing games. I like winning, you know? But I don't mm. like going to practice. Like, I don't I don't enjoy, like, coming home, beat up every day. Like, this isn't, like, I don't like doing something that could end at any moment because I, I turned the wrong way or something. And, like, I'm not, I don't want to, I don't want to be a security guard and go hang out with famous people just so I can catch a bullet for them if I need to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and that's, even when I started creating like music and stuff like that, people would come to like the studio and be like, "Yo, like, yo, like your beats are sick, but like, yo, what if we brought you on tour with us and like, you know, like you just got on stage and like you held it down security wise, like, so like I can be a meat shield? Like, like why would I want to do that? You know what I yeah. mean? Like, you're here to I invited you here to produce, not invited you here to business pitch to you that I can beat people up for you. Like, so that's when. I almost started taking offense to it. Like I would be like, "No, like, I I have a purpose. I have a self goal, and and that's why I took the TikTok because it was like, if people aren't gonna hear it, then I'm just gonna show them. Like I I I had it written on. I just have like a white table that I use as a desk, and I, it's like you can dry erase on it. So for for the longest time, right underneath my computer, I had the quote, "Those who will not listen will feel," and. I took to that very intensely that anyone that's not listening to my dreams right now will be forced to at a point because I'm not gonna con- I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take to someone else's dream. This is me. And I, uh, another quote that I always that I, I keep on myself is that be impossible to ignore because you need to put yourself in a position where no matter what people want you to do, want you to be, whatever, put yourself in the position constantly be showing off what you are so no matter what they say you say but oh, this is me you know what i mean mm-hmm. and that's something that i've taken very personally i boxes are only there to restrict you only there's no there's no exceeding in the box yeah so yeah yeah absolutely crazy sorry sorry there's a lag so i'm like oh i mean yeah, I've done talk. Go ahead, you're good, you're good. yeah i know sorry yeah <laughs> the, the beauty the beauty with zoom right is yeah. you don't know when the other person's done um <laughs> yeah man it's uh i i kind of experienced something similar in when i was in swimming because i i'm just gonna, like i don't really have the body type of a swimmer but it was Wait, what i wanted you're that's what I'm, yeah exactly that, so <laughs> my that's my against you yeah, like my whole time when I was swimming, people were like, why are, are you not in any other sport? I'm like, what? So the entire time I was swimming, I was convinced. I was like, I shouldn't be here because I am built like a rugby player, like a hockey player, whatever it is. But you can't just, you can't, like it. it it's hard to not fall into the box of this is my body type, so I have to be this, or this is my whatever this is the situation i was born into so i have to be this it's like you don't like it's hard not to take that to heart and like i'm not i'm not a perfect child like when i was swimming i would do it all the time i said oh i shouldn't be a swimmer i should be a rugby player this sucks and i would just make my situation worse which didn't help anything but if if you can find a way to realize that you don't have to fall into that box and especially now like we've mentioned already like the opportunities are insane now you can do anything just do it if you if in your heart you want to do something and you're very passionate about it but the only thing holding you back is oh a guy like me or a girl like me would never do that do it stop that stop that narrative that narrative is bullshit Mm -hmm. and even if you don't want to do it for you do it for the person that looks like you that's in that exact same position Yes. You know? Like that's and that's one thing I've always said to myself. Like like I like like I said, I look like a football player, I look like a security guard, whatever it is. But I feel like an actor. And I know there's another kid that I'm gonna meet, whether it's tomorrow or five years from now, that's like, yo, like I play football right now, but like I really love singing, you know? Mm-hmm. And like never mind, like you can you like never mind the whole look thing. But the acceptance of others, man, like how nerve wracking was it for you to say, I'm done swimming. I'm going to go to a mental health podcast when all you've known your whole life is swimming. Dude, it wasn't even that because swimming was going to end for me regardless. Sure. But just starting it, 
like I was I was like, hey, I'm going to take away this mask that I have of being the happy guy and having things figured out. And I'm going to be honest and say that I've tried to end my life and I hate the way I look and I do these things. That was terrifying. Yep. I thought I, I'm no joke, like because I the first time I was very, very open about it to random people was that mental health panel at the University of Guelph. I, I remember. I remember yeah, I remember right before that thing started, there were swimmers in the stands and stuff. I was like, well, there goes my entire friend group. Yep. I was like, yep. no one's going to like me. Nope. No. Well, and like, which is so obscure, but it's like, it's like, people are, yeah, people are going to be like, oh, like, you're just a fake, like, this whole time. Like, put yourself in my shoes, man. Yeah. And you like, another thing that's, the, yeah. And the other thing that's scary is like, Okay, now I've told you this. Like, are you just gonna coddle me for the rest of my life? Hey, mm-hmm. how how are you doing today? Are you okay? Like, like, I've had people do that to me, and I literally tell them like, you are the reason why I'm getting worse. And like, I hate to say that, but it's like, it's like, cause like, I like, I I hate to say that because no, you're not actually. But I think there is something about identifying someone's personality with their mental illness that makes it very, very hard to grow and learn how to cope with it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know? Like, when you're convinced that your personality type is depressed, anxious, like, you're going to go out through your whole life like, yeah, this is just me, so, like, fuck it. I was, I was just talking to someone recently about that because it's – I did it – it's a big reason why I never wanted to open up about anything. Like, as soon as I got the diagnosis, I was like, no, like, fuck off. Mm. Because it's so easy when someone tells you, when a doctor tells you, you have depression. It is so easy to go, that's all I am. Simple. And then it, it's it's like that I am, you're not Harry, you're not a friend, you're not a f- brother, a son, you're not an athlete, you're not a creator, you're depressed. You're a rain cloud on a sunny sun day, or you're sunny day. Yeah, like you're you're the Eeyore of your friend group. That's what you are. It's like, no, you're not. But when you're in that position, that's all you think you are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sad. That's so and it's, and it's like and like when you're in that position, it's like, how do you get out? Like, what are you gonna tell yourself to get yourself out of this? There's nothing you can say because the only thing you could say is you could tell people that like that's how you feel, and then they're gonna be like, but you're not that, and your mental illness is gonna be like you're just saying that. Mm-hmm. You know. Yep. So like that's why like I like I love everyone that's like and mind you if 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 you talking about your mental illness in like a joking way is a way for you to cope, then I understand that. Please don't stop doing that. And if it genuinely helps you, that like you can like you know. But like I have a lot of issues with that. Like I feel like I feel like it's kind of like that that like anxious laugh. You know what I mean? Or it's like uh. Uh-huh. Like I'm actually like more concerned about you kind of, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like you, you like, see it a lot on TikTok. Fully, and it scares me. Yeah. It scares me too. Because it's like, like, do you want me to reach out to you? Mm-hmm. Or is this like actually helping you? Like, and I, I have a lot of trouble believing it's actually helping, you know, like, I feel yeah. like that's you just be like identifying with it too much. And like, I will fully say, my mental illnesses has helped me learn a lot more about myself, a lot, like, how I work, what works for me, what doesn't work for me. I'll crack a joke about it every once in a while. I'm, I'm fully guilty of that. But there's times where it's just, like, I don't want, I know it's there. It's going to be there. It's like, it's like when you, like, when you, like, you sprain your ankle, right? The more that you sit there and you're like, dude, my ankle is fucked. Like, the more you think about it, the more you're going to be like, oh, this is never going to get better. This is it. It's not. Rather than it's like, okay, I sprained my ankle. It hurts. It sucks. But I have to walk on it. You know what I mean? I have to walk on it. Mm-hmm. Like, because if I don't walk on it, then what's going to happen? A, it's not going to get better. B, I'm just going to be sitting here thinking about how bad it is. And that it's just going to, like, eat at me. And like, oh, my God, my ankle's never going to get better. I kind of treat my mental, like, I know it's there. I know it's there. And there are times and places for me to talk about it. But I feel like there are times and places where I shouldn't. And, like, not, and, like, that's, that's not me telling anyone that, like, if you're in a place that you shouldn't come and talk to me because I want to help you. 
I want to help you. But I think it's very dangerous where, like, when you're, like, like someone's like, hey, man, how's your day? Like, when you're just in passing, you're like, oh, fuck, man, you know, my life's shit. You're like, oh, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, and, like, don't, if your life is generally that bad, then let's figure it out. But, like, don't keep wallowing in it. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? I don't want to sound insensitive in that, in me saying that. No, no, I, I know exactly what you mean. It's the, if you're genuinely like, hey, man, my day's been really shitty, then yes, please say it. Please. Like, there are people out there who want to help you. But if you're actively joking about mental health or mental illness because you're looking for likes or you're looking for attention, then I can't vibe with that. Like, it, it's a real thing, man. And there's there's people out there who they make a post and it's a genuine cry for help. And if that's your way of expressing it and that's your way of getting people to reach out to you, please do it. I want people to reach out to you and I want people to help you. And I want to, I want you to get the help you need because a lot of us need it. But if you're just doing it for the sake of likes or for the sake of sharers or for the sake of your friends might get a good chuckle from it and you don't actually feel that way, you can't do that. Come on. Yeah. Or even if you do feel that way and you want people to get a laugh from it, it's like, it's not the laugh that you really want. It's like, it's kind of like a pity laugh. Like, kind of like, oh, that, that's so funny. But like, you know, can like, can we shut TikTok off for a bit? And like, can we actually talk? Because like, yeah, this isn't humorous. Like, I'm scared for you. Like, if like this is what you, you've been posting this every day, you know, mm-hmm. like, like either you do want attention, which I tend to believe that's not the case, or you're just like you're so lost, and then you feel like. This is me, and this is who I am. So this is what I offer to the world. And it's like you're so much more than that. Yeah. And like your mental illness is gonna be there, and it's it's gonna and it sucks. Like you, I'll say it about myself. My mental illnesses will probably never go away. Never. I'm probably gonna be with them until the day that I pass. But I will never just be Jordy the depressed kid, Jordy the generalized anxious kid. I want to bring more to. I want to. I want to show people that like I carry this weight, but I also bring something. Like I, the weight is being carried. It's in my backpack, but I'm still walking forward. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yep. So I know. I know exactly what you mean, man. I, that's that's a big reason why I do this whole show and I bring people on. Is like, you know, as a kid or as a guy trying to figure himself out. I was always like, yeah, I'm Harry the depressed guy. I was never. And, and I, no one else knew. I was just in my head. That's how I vis- visualized myself. I was like, yeah, I'm Harry, the weak guy, the depressed guy, the guy who wants to end it like a weirdo. I, I'm, I'm, it's a big reason why I do the show is because like you can have that mental, like I, they, it doesn't just go away. It's there, but I'm not just that. Well, you know, no. and you don't have to take the label the whole labeling thing is such an issue, but like you, you don't have to take it. Like you, it's a part of you, unfortunately. And I'm sorry that it is, but it's not what defines you. No, you're so much more than that. You're so So much much more. more It's like, it's like when I tell people, like people like, let's say like someone has like a lisp or like a stutter. It's like, Mm. it's like, well, like it's probably like that doesn't make what you have to say any less, you know, any less meaningful. You just have mm-hmm. to take a little bit more time to say it, or you, like, you might not be able to pronounce it as you want. To. Doesn't stop. Doesn't mean you're not like the most like gifted speaker in the world. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. Like, just because you have these these in, in, inside issues that a lot of us a lot of us have, and I, that's one thing I want to say too is like this, uh, this is just gonna go, kind of go back to like the COVID talk too. Is like I hate that people are like, yeah, but like all of us are going to. Yeah, I hate that mindset. Like mm. we are, we are all going through it, but that's why we all need to listen to each other. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, like just because you have that list doesn't mean just because you have depression and you feel less than everyone else, and your brain's telling you that. Prove your brain wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, if your brain is working against you, then let that be your challenge. When you go to the gym and you're your brain is set on bench pressing 225 you do everything every day until you can bench press 225 if your brain is telling you that you're not happy 
Put in everything that you can until your brain is fighting off the fact that you are just a depressed kid. You know what I mean? Your brain's mm-hmm. a muscle. Your brain is a muscle. And it needs exercise. And sitting in your room by yourself and staring at the ceiling. The, the only reason I can say this is because I have been there. Not eating, you know, not getting fresh air. Your brain's, your muscles aren't getting exercise. You're weakening your brain and you're allowing yourself a little bit. You are allowing yourself to become your thoughts. Yeah. So, and to anyone listening, please, please, please. And like I said, I've said this before, I said this in my first podcast, people like myself, people like Harry, we are the people that want to be the first steps in you getting your life together on your own. You know what I mean? I'm not here to tell you that I can fix your problems. I can. I'd love to. I'd love to. I'd love to carry the weight for you. But I'd also love to teach you how to carry the weight. And they say, like, uh, like, like if you bring a fish to a man, he eats for a day. You teach a man how to fish, he eats for the rest of his life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing for taking those steps to to combat, to deal with your mental illness. That I think a lot of people need to advocate for and need to show. Like, like I'm, your therapist can't 100% help you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I've been to therapy. You've been to therapy. If you're only feeling good when you're there, then you're not taking what they're teaching you in the right way. You need to learn yourself to ask the same questions that they ask you, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Um, there's not going to be a, a fix. There's no stitches. There's no reconstructive surgery for your brain. Your brain is going gonna, is gonna to learn to adapt with how you treat it. And if you're only feeding yourself hatred all the time, then you're a product of what you consume. So. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I tell people that all the time. It's like, listen, I'm not a professional in any capacity, and we need people that are professionals. And you might need that, and I want you to go get it. I do. But sometimes you need someone who's just been through the ringer too. Yep. yep. That's it. Yep. Someone that has their battle scars. You know what I mean? Someone. Mm-hmm. Someone that is just living proof of like, wow, I don't need to do this. And I, someone, like, I, I'm all the time when my friends are like, you know, I think I need to go to see a therapist. I'm like, yeah, you should. Mm-hmm. I want that stigma to be gone. You should. Yeah. Well, you can be the happiest person ever. You should go to a therapist. Just once, you know, like, just like, just to like, you know, just to, because if you're ever in that situation where you need one, you need to know that it's just like, it's fine to go. Yeah it's isn't it isn't it crazy like i have friends now who are ashamed to go like still it's sad it's sad how that's still here they're like yeah don't tell don't tell anyone but i went to therapy it's like that's good man i'm happy for you awesome it's such a hard step to take you're taking that first step like why are you ashamed of it i'm like think about it man when you are an op like like sports facilities, like these guys that are making millions of dollars that seem carefree, there are therapists on those in those like coaching environments. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yep. these guys that like you'd be like, no way he has like anything going on each other. They just have therapists around, life coaches, whatever it is. Because you need to know that like when you're when when things aren't making sense to you, there are those people that'll ask you those questions that might help you make sense of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. It's, uh, it's interesting. It's interesting how it's still so stigmatized. It's sad. I think we're going like, I'm sure I've said this before. We're going in the right direction. Of course. I know a lot of friends who go to therapy and they're like, yeah, I go. And that's like the best thing I've ever heard when they're just like, yeah, I've been to therapy. So what? I'm like, Oh, good. We're not making it such a, a shameful thing to do. That's, that's kind of my goal with everything is like, even if it's like, I don't, I don't think I'm going to do it single handedly, but I would like to play a part in getting to a world where it's like, yeah, I have depression or yeah, I went to therapy. So like to get to a point where it's not your identity or it's not like a, Whoa, are you okay? Let me coddle you for the rest of your life. It's just like a, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so what else do you do? You know, like, oh, cool, yeah. I had a cup of coffee this morning. So, what, like, what else do you do? Like, yeah, it's the same thing. 
Yeah, but it doesn't need to be this thing that you hide forever. And so it's, yeah, I agree. And I think I can confidently say, I think through you doing this platform, through me take talking, I think we're, we are doing the steps we need to get in the right direction. As when, and people will catch on. People will catch on. We have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%, man. And also, everybody could use a therapist this year. <laughs> this year? You don't have one? Yo, I'm coming to talk to you. Yeah. Because holy, yeah, this is every- a nightmare. Holy crap, man. This year has been a gong show, but we won't fall into that rabbit hole because yeah, yeah. I, I think people, already. yeah, I think people listening are like, okay, that's enough of 2020. I don't really care about it. <laughs> it's it's, it's going to be one of those things where it's like Voldemort. You don't want to say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody marries in the wash. Nobody oh. marries in the wash. Yeah, exactly. All right, man. Where can my viewers find you? So I am for rel on everything. That is the number four R E three L's and an underscore for rel on TikTok, um, on YouTube with this podcast and Hey Hawk, where are you? Um, Instagram and Twitter. Twitter, if you have some sort of inclination that I'm a professional. Do not follow me on Twitter. That's where I let my brain throw up on itself. Do not follow me there. But Instagram, TikTok, feel free. I'd love to I'd love to make you laugh. So um that's yeah, that's me for real. I love it, man. I'll put all those links down below as usual. Jordy, thank you, man, for coming on. This Harry, thank you. Dude, thank you. And like uh, I know you're gonna have to sit through two hours of editing now, but thank you very much for having me and I hope I can be on another day as well. Man. Thank you again. Keep doing yeah, your things. Let's get you to number one, man. Number ten, the top ten percent isn't cutting it for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you're listening, help me get to the top, <laughs> at least top five. That I'll, yeah. that's the bare minimum. <laughs> at least, at least, bare minimum. Show all your friends. I don't care if you're gonna tie people to chairs and take their phones and stream them at the same time. But we're doing it. We're doing it all twenty twenty. Bro, whatever it takes. Whatever yeah, twenty twenty one thing. Yeah. We're out we're out of that. <laughs> don't don't even mention that year. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was that was wrong with me. But yeah, man, thank you so much. Keep doing your thing. And uh I'll be tuned in as I always am on my walks with my dog and look forward to the more success that comes your way. I love it, man. And right back at you. I can't wait for the next TikTok. I can't wait for the next alive. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, it's all coming. my for you pages we'll see yeah it's coming it's coming soon so you just wait on that every day at 5 p.m plugging myself every day at 5 p.m uh oh and on twitch whoa 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 i'm on mm. twitch too twitch every day 8 30 till 10 30 at 4 hours same thing as every day but yeah there will be more lives there'll be more things that make you question if i'm actually gonna be able. that's just that me so <laughs> <laughs> i love it man all right buddy and to all my viewers I will see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching another episode of my show. If you want more episodes of the H panel, the button's gonna be right here. If you wanna subscribe for more videos from myself, it'll be right down below. Please like, comment, share, give five stars. Let's keep this conversation going guys, all right? I'll see you next time. Thank you for your support.